Now, Silence, the new Martin Scorsese film starring Liam Neeson, is out in cinemas today. It's all about Jesuit priests who go out to Japan to win converts at a time when Catholicism was outlawed and their presence forbidden. It's based on real events in medieval history, and there's a wealth of stories around the subject. One of these is the recently published Hidden by the Leaves by SDL Curry. Earlier, I spoke to Sean and asked him where his fascination with Japan came from. I've lived in Japan. I used to live there in the late 90s. Um, I've always been an avid martial arts practitioner. And then, of course, you know, I am a Christian. So I think probably the combination of all of those things led to uh, my interest in this time period. And how much really is known about Christianity in Japan at this time? I, I was quite surprised, actually, when reading uh, the notes about the book, that uh, there, there was such a, a large group of missionaries who went there in the first place, um, so early, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first missionary who went there was um, quite a renowned Jesuit, St. Francis Xavier. He went there in, the, uh, he went there in 1549, and then probably over the course of, say, 70 years, um, probably less, maybe more 60 years, you know, there was, there was quite a growth period in Christianity. There, um, there was a huge uptake in the, in the religion across the country. And then for political reasons, uh, the tide started to change, and then it became very anti-Christian, and there was huge persecutions that resulted as a result of some of the, the politics that were happening. But at one point, there were, I think at the height, there was close to, call it 300,000 uh, Christians in Japan, which is quite a significant population around the, you know, the time of 1626. Mm. And how did they worship at this time? Was it similar to the Catholic Church in other parts of the world? Well, I think it, it was a case of the, uh, the Jesuits going over there, obviously having to deal with language issues, so you can imagine that, you know, there wasn't a, a um, call it a, a dictionary. Um, so they had to spend years trying to understand the language and, um, you know, they had huge communication barriers. So I think once they got over that, then they started to preach, you know, the principles of Christianity. Um, I would say that there was there was quite a stark contrast with that in Shintoism or, or Buddhism, um, that was largely practiced in Japan at the time. And I think at you know during these during this time period, there was a fair amount of conflict between Buddhism and Christianity, sort of trying to be the uh, you know the the path to God. And so the the Jesuits and the the uh, the Buddhists, you know there there was a fair there's a fair amount of conflict. Now, your book itself, hidden by the leaves, it focuses on the story of Father Wakim and his two young priests, Miguel and Tanya. Now, at their time, they're in medieval Japan. Christianity yes. has been banned. Yes. These are pretty frightening times. Yes. Why it, haven't they left the country? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I would say it, go, it comes down to the core of their being. Um, Father Joaquim, he, he's a priest. Um, Miguel and Tonya, they are uh, what I would re refer to as catechists. Uh, why did they not leave? They didn't leave because they were... Uh, you know, it was their mission. Their mission was to, despite the danger um, and the perils of being there, and, and quite frankly, it was actually their lives that were at stake. If, if you were discovered, you know, there's no, there's no real court system. You, you are effectively executed. So, um, you know, they did it because they believed in spreading Christianity. Um, it's very much, you know, the core of, uh, of their being. And uh, you know, it's, it's part of the mission. It's part of the expansion of the church out of Rome. Hmm. And that religious persecution, it doesn't take a great amount of imagination to compare to what's happening today. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, if, if you do your reading and you get into the history, I mean, I would say that the tortures uh, and, and the, the methods uh, and the intensity that they tried to to use to, to vet out Christianity was e extremely intense. I mean, the, you know, the tortures are diabolical, and they range from 
they they range from anything like cutting off you know cutting off people's limbs to boiling people alive in volcanic water, uh, drowning people, burning them alive, hanging them upside down, and letting them bleed to death. I mean, uh, torturing family members. The, you know, there was an absolute vengeance to get rid of Christianity, and a lot of it. And you and you're probably asking yourself, I mean, why? Like, why? Why was there such um, intensity to get rid of Christianity? And it, it came down to the Shogun, to be honest, he was uh, very paranoid of um, being conquered by an external nation. Uh, he had heard um, through uh, other countries that uh, Christianity would largely send in uh, Christians to infiltrate um, a culture, and then later on sort of the soldiers would show up and take over. And then there was also an element of, um, of ego. I mean, he, he, he truly ran the show. He was worshipped. And he thought it was very odd that someone would worship, you know, someone like Jesus or, you know, a religion. He thought it was, it was very odd that someone would worship anyone other than himself. So for all of those reasons, he basically said, I want, you know, I'm done with Christianity. It has to go. And he went to every length possible to try and make sure it happened. You can draw a comparison with Donald Trump saying he's going to ban Muslims from America. That's right. That's right. You know, as I mentioned, he uh, he he said that uh, I think part of his campaigning that he would ban Muslims from uh, traveling from elsewhere in the world into the U.S. And you know, quite frankly, it, it doesn't work. Um, you know, he the Shogun in Japan tried to do it uh, out of Macau, so a lot of the trade was coming out of um, China from Macau into into, into Japan. And uh, you know, as I mentioned, the, the 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 captains were personally liable. So if if any of the people on board, a tradesman, um, uh, you know, other individuals, if they turned out to be Christian, they would execute them. So you can imagine how intense that could be in today's society if a pilot who flew into the U.S. was personally accountable, i.e., in the days of Trump, if if um, you know one of the passengers passengers on board an airplane was was Muslim, he'd be executed. I mean, that's effectively what it was back in in medieval Japan, 16th century Japan. It was very intense. Mm, seems like we've learned nothing from history whatsoever. Now. Let's talk about this film, Silence. Um, Martin Scorsese, fantastic film director. And Liam Neeson, one of my favourite leading men. I think he's brilliant. They both combine for this film, Silence, which is based on an earlier book about medieval Japan. But this has got to be a good thing for you because you're writing about similar things. Hopefully public interests will increase. I think so. You know, you know to be honest, had it not have been for this movie, probably very few people would would ever be aware of it i mean let's be honest this is a very dark part of japanese history um i'm sure that uh, you know a lot of japan would probably not like it to be known but this was a very intense period where they persecuted uh, christians and then it became um even more intense to the point where they became very xenophobic they they closed off the country to basically foreigners for nearly 200 years um, and what's interesting about this whole period is that it it drove Christianity underground for 200 years. And that's why I was kind of saying that, you know, despite politicians' best efforts or leaders' best efforts to, you know, annihilate or get rid of a religion, it's never going to go. Um, you know, faith is, you know, by definition, you know, it, it endures. Um, and it's it's impossible it's it's impossible to get rid of it. It's just simply going to drive it underground. Sean, absolute pleasure talking to you. That's S. D. L. Curry. His book, book one of the Hidden Trilogy, Hidden by the Leaves, is out.